which refinement do you really want? It's a fine balance. And there you have it, Jan Ling Motors Company. Leather has worn away. It's are so rubbish. It has hints of Isuzu in the styling. If you're looking at quality control. And you can have a conversation. Bud lighting goes a little blue. Four by four. Well, morning campus, it's not a landy. This is something totally different. I think it's Chinese. It's JMC. Uh, as you see on the back plate, it says Jian Ling Motor Corporation or something. Uh, this is called the Vegas, which is kind of the luxury version. You've got mag wheels, bigger tires, you've got running boards, and a roll over roll bar, and a bull bar, I think, which is quite cool. We've been living in this for, I don't know, three weeks now. Uh, we've been through rough roads, we've been on the highway. It's been a pretty good little car as we traverse another track uh, coming out of, where are we? Somewhere near Plettenberg Bay, Tsitsikama. Really cool place this. The ocean is literally about 5Ks that way. We're now trying to find our way back to dry land, literally. And um, yeah, what can I say about this car? What's what you want to know? It's pretty good. It's based on the Ranger underneath. As far as I can tell, I don't know if it's true. You can check it out and back me up down below in the comments. Uh, what that means is pretty good. It's 2.4. I think it's a Puma engine. That looks suspiciously like a Puma to me as well. A Panther and a Puma are basically the same thing, so you tell me. Anyway, what's nice is gas struts. You don't get that on most cars. Chassis and the running gear is also Ford Ranger, I think. It's 4x4, switchable 4x4 with a button right here. Uh, it's all very easy to use. Runs very well on highway. There's a lot of difference to traveling in a landy at 85 k's an hour where you can't hear yourself think. We're now doing about 120. We're on the south coast of South Africa and I'm sure you can hear me perfectly well as I say this. Uh, engine's pretty muted. All you can really hear are the tires. Got some Firestone tires, brand new because we had a couple of flat tires. Replaced both of them and those tires are rock hard. They make a bit of a humming on the noise. But beyond that, not much in the way of wind noise or any other thing. And you can have a conversation. If you do 130, 140 k's an hour, no big deal at all. And it'll sit there all day. Uh, there are some bad sides to it, which we'll get to right now. And the number one is the gearbox itself. As we all know, the Ford Ranger is a six-speed gearbox. And it's for a reason. It matches the engine properties quite well. Uh, the engine has a bit of torque, but it's not all that powerful. And this one has a five-speed box, which I suspect comes out of a FAW or some other sort of Chinese make. Shall we stop for a second while I finish this? So five-speed box, the ratios are not that good. Very clunky getting to second and third. Well, the one thing that does, uh, that is noticeable is if you are in a low revs, let's see That rumble that goes through the chassis if your revs on high enough, which is a bit of a, uh, a pity. The ratios are quite far apart as well. Um, overtaking is not too bad from 80 to 100. Pulls quite well, but from 100 to 120, it's quite slow picking up speed, which gives it a bit of trouble when you're overtaking on the highway. But beyond that, smooth as anything. It's reliable, refined enough, everything in here you need. After all, a pickup, a bucky, is here as a work vehicle. Originally, how much refinement do you really want? It's a fine balance. The other side is this middle console effort here, which is a disaster because you just can't put anything away. You've got one little cup holder and the rest of your stuff kind of gets cluttered around. Our phone has to go down here, which is sometimes in the way with the gears. Um, it has this entertainment system which is quite old. This is a 2015 model, by the way. So it doesn't have, it has a touch screen, which is cool. You can change your, okay, it's not working now. Maybe it's too dusty. Uh, a lot of buttons on here. 
It even has a DVD player, which is quite cool. Uh, the only thing is you can watch your DVD while you're driving, which is uh, probably not a good thing in Europe. But hey, it's there, why not? Uh, the other side is the steering wheel um, uh, leather is worn away. So we've got this little rubber cover on there. Uh, same with the gear knob, it's kind of worn away a little bit. But beyond that, the rest is all quite solid. It's not too bad. Pretty good plastics. It's a bucky, right? You've got your electric windows, all of that stuff. That's probably in this model alone. Back seat's not too bad. You've got enough leg room. It's not the longest, obviously, but most double cab buckies are the same. Um, yeah, actually, it has hints of Isuzu in the styling, especially the nose is just quite round. Um, it's obviously taken from um, uh, technology that's a couple of years older from the Europeans, I, I assume. This model didn't last that long. I think it came out in 2014, 15. It lasted maybe a year or two, and then the company changed its name to JAC, which is probably Jenling Automotive Corporation. They have the new T5, T6s, and then the T8s coming out now as well, which is a big upgrade to this, but look, it's old tech, but it works. A couple of little things. the there's no rattles in the dash. This is a little bit loose. If you're looking at quality control. Build quality, pretty good. Doors close well. That's all good. Back door, the same thing. Don't need much. Got your little roll hoop here. Got a tonneau cover. These are aftermarket. You got these lash down points as well. At the back, like a typical bucky. Remember the days when you had two handles at each end. Now everyone's gone for this. It's a little bit rickety. Maybe like most buckies. Handle in the middle is quite sturdy, um, stiff. Sometimes it doesn't want to let go, but it hasn't broken. Typical load bed. It's got a bit of padding over here. Inside you've got a point for 12 volt, uh, like a cigarette lighter, power, which is pretty cool. So there it is. Get a tow bar as well. And reverse sensors, which isn't too bad. Well, another pet hate that I have with this car is this. As soon as you start driving, as soon as you move off, you're in 5Ks an hour, you get this beep, beep, beep for your seatbelt, which is the most annoying beep on the planet. Um, the other one is there's no cruise control on this car, which you think, yeah, why do you need cruise control? Well, when you're going through South Africa, there's a hundred kilometers between towns and the road is practically dead straight. It does help. Dashboard is typical, not very modern by today's standards. Basically doors open, time, distance, temperature and fuel. Night lighting goes a little blue, which is quite cool. So the weird part here is that the indicator is on the right hand side. And your wash wipe is on the left, which is totally opposite to what the normal Europeans do, which is a little bit crazy, but there you are. Uh, you've got your little fuel filler flap thing, which is quite important here in South Africa. As I said, the middle thing, here's your little a hole there, there is a USB down there, uh, which plays your songs. I couldn't get it to charge the phone, which is strange. One little cup holder, here's a switchable 4x4, dual drive 4 high, 4 low. That's all very cool. I think you have to be stationary for that, or at least I did. Here's your entertainment system. Let's see it boot up quickly. A lot of dust in here, we've just come off a long trip uh, through a lot of dirt road, a lot of dust, a lot of mud, which has been really rather good. So here we have uh, our music. Change the song. I am just a poor boy, though my stories. So yeah, there's the sound. It's, it's okay, it's pretty average. We do the menu. We've got the radio, USB, equalizer. It's a touch screen. Should be. Radio. I think there's a lot of dust on the screen, that's the problem. 
Uh, yeah, it's pretty responsive. As I said, you can play a DVD in here even while you're driving, which is probably counterintuitive. It has a five-speed box, which has been a little bit of a bane of contention. Down here, these things are so rubbish. It doesn't even open. Like the old, old school um, ashtrays. Yeah. Basically, it's a useless piece of storage space. Uh, other than that, it drives very really well. Just sits on the highway, as I said, cruises along very well. Another little weird thing. There you go, 2.4D. Okay, cool. But not on the other side. 26570 R16s. Nice little mag wheels, I guess. You got your running boards down here. Mud flaps, which were handy. Uh, spare wheel, which we did use. And there you have it, Jan Ling Motors Company. As I said, it's a limited model. Um, yeah, pretty impressed. Seat covers keep everything good. Uh, beyond that, no issues at all. Um, no real rattles. Engine runs, everything's good. 4x4 switching system works, all of that. Uh, the other one little thing that I must say is that the handbrake is on the wrong side if you're in a right-hand drive car. It should be here. Um, so I think probably a left-hand drive, they forgot to do that. It's not a big deal. I said it's a pretty good value for money, man. This thing costs about half of what you would pay for a normal Bucky in South Africa. And a Bucky is a pickup, by the way, to you, those of you who don't know. Welcome to the Chinese way of looking at things. It kind of works. And I'm thinking, if you're looking for a Bucky, it's got everything you need. And I'm not sure what the extra brand value does give you. It does give you maybe a little bit of it in the back of your mind. A highlight will last forever. This thing does the same thing. So thanks for watching, guys. A little bit of a different slant to things. Um, yeah, it's not a landy, but getting us there. Got some bumpy roads, a lot of dirt, a lot of dust. A lot of uh, wet, um, rutted roads, a lot of rain. So yeah, greetings from Tsitsikama in South Africa. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, catch you on the next one, and we're going to keep rolling down this road. Cheers.